Disney's Teacher's Pet had aired on ABC's One Saturday Morning Block from 2000 to 2002. Halfway through its second season, though, the series was transferred to Toon Disney and had the remaining five episodes of the second season that was originally planned to be aired on ABC, along with the remaining 13 episodes that was originally planned to be used as a third season, since ABC Kids was being developed around that time for the 2002-2003 season. When it originally aired, the series was praised for its animation, humor, and wit. It was also great with ratings. Despite this, Disney pretty much threw the show under the bus later on, and by September 14th, 2002, it was removed from ABC altogether for the new ABC Kids block. There was also a series finale theatrical movie that premiered on January 16th, 2004, and like the series, despite having positive reviews, the movie was a box office failure, only making a little half of its budget back on it. This was mainly due to the fact that Disney barely promoted it outside of promos on TV and other DVDs that were being released around that time. As for the series, Toon Disney eventually stopped rerunning the series a few years later, and since on June 1st, 2006, the show hasn't been on any of the Disney Network since then. The movie itself in the first episode has been released on its own DVD, Teacher's Pet, the movie, but the other 38, 46 separate episodes, Episodes remain unavailable to the world, and has never been on demand on iTunes or whatever. It wasn't until the late 2008 that on YouTube, that people started to post up old original recordings from when the show had first aired on ABC and to Disney. Other episodes were eventually posted in early 2013 and on 4th, until Disney claimed copyright on all the episodes, and had them taken off the internet. The good news is that episodes are available online through a special-made Facebook page to host said episodes, and also recently they have been uploaded onto Dailymotion 2. Uh, also, someone has taken all the Season 1 episodes and placed onto a homemade DVD set for sale. But enough of that. On to the pasta. The Theory Disney's Teacher's Pet was an ABC Saturday morning show that was about a blue dog named Spot that dressed up as a fourth grade boy, and went to school under the name of Scott Ledready II, along with his master and best friend, Leonard. Now, many people would call this a stupid premise. Let's face it, even if you liked the series, how could no one tell that Scott had a dog's face, or notice that his dog ears can be slightly seen when his beanie is on? But, actually, it was well written, witty, and very underrated. There were other characters, like Pretty Boy and Mr. Jolly, Leonard's pet canary, and Cat, who could talk also. Leslie, Leonard's love interest, and Mary Lou Helperman, otherwise known as Mrs. Helperman, who was Leonard's mother and teacher. There were also other characters in the school, and one notable character was Ian Wasolski, a really gross and out-there kind of student. I'm surprised that no one thinks of him as a special needs kind of kid. Well, anyway, let's stop to think for a second and wonder how in the hell can these animals talk like human beings and yet never reveal it to anyone else. It seems kind of odd that this is a well-kept secret, since it would make communication with pets and humans much easier. I mean, have animals been able to communicate like this the whole time? Or maybe there is something else to this that we don't know about. Well, I think I may have the answer. You see, in the movie... It was revealed that Ivan Crank, you know, the wacko, was developing a machine that can change pets' DNA and make them human. It's also discovered that Ian is related to Ivan Crank, and he is happy with Ian since he is the only one who believes his inventions and intentions. Well, in a few scenes prior to Ian meeting up with his cousin, he lets Leonard and Scott, who is now human at this point, free without realizing that Ivan had placed them there for his intentions of proving that he's not a wacko. It's shown that, despite being gross and taboo, he's actually very intelligent when it comes to computers and hacking them. He afterwards hacks the computers to give the 21 flush salute to the queen toilets in the UK. Gross. Well, it's been established that he and Ivan have a connection for gross stuff and computers prior to the movie, to which makes me think that how animals are now able to walk and talk and all that jazz. You see... Two years prior to the series premiere, i.e. right before the second grade, 
Ian had stayed with his uncle on the last week before school started in sunny Florida to help Ivan with some of his inventions and whatnot. Well, on the last day before he left for his hometown, Ian was working on a new invention with Ivan that predated the machine that could turn animals into humans. Instead, he was working on a machine that could make it so that he could easier communicate with animals. With Ian on his side, the machine was complete. The codes were put together, and the first test subject was on a frog that came from Ivan Crank's swamp that surrounds his house. They tested the machine on the frog, but as the machine was about to zap it, making it be able to talk to them in English, the machine instead flopped up and shot into the sky. By the time the machine had stopped, it was too worn out to try again, as the frog merely flopped away outside. Ian at that point had to leave for the bus ride home to East Westland, as Ivan moped that his inventions were worthless and that he was a failure. Little did he know that his machine did more than give the frog the ability to speak, though. The machine not only managed to make it so that every animal on the planet was able to talk in English now, or whatever language they were to speak, but also over time start to become more intelligent and become more aware of their surroundings. The animals never really questioned this, but they knew to keep their mouths shut because they didn't want to be exposed. Over the next two years, as Spot noticed his master, Leonard, went to school and did his homework at nighttime, Spot became a bit envious of him, since Leonard was able to gain an education, since he was human and Spot wasn't. It wasn't until 2000, when Leonard had his first day of being a fourth grader, that Spot had decided, finally, that he should be allowed to go to school. Henceforth, he started dressing up as Scott Letty Ready the Second, and despite of Leonard knowing of his secret about him and other animals being able to walk and talk and whatnot, he and Spot still hang out as best buds at school and other activities. And in those two years leading up to the events of the movie, Ivan Crank had gotten over his depression as he realized that he wasn't a wacko, since his invention actually did work, since Ian was one of the only people to notice the difference with the animals with them being able to talk now. Despite this, Ivan couldn't prove it to anyone else since the other animals were smart enough not to respond to him, or any other human for that matter. Still, with the help of his cousin Ian over the winter, spring, and summer breaks, he had been able to finish up making a machine that could transform animals into humans. This caught wind in Florida on The Barry Anger Show. Though near the middle of June, as Barry Anger and the rest of the audience members, and presumably people watching it on their TVs at home, merely declared him as a wacko, but Ivan was persistent at finishing up his machine to prove that he was a genius and not a wacko. Before Spot appeared, though, he tried the experiment with an alligator and a fly, to which they're hybrids of both animal and human. Why, when Spot appeared to him as his dog self, that Ivan didn't merely ask him to reveal himself to the public as a walking, talking dog is anyone's guess. But for him to be able to turn Spot into a human being is the next best thing. Once you think about it, it does make legitimate sense. I mean, when Spot, after transforming into a human in the movie, thanks Ian for letting him and Leonard go, Ian seems to be somewhat aware that it's really Spot slash Scott as that human being. Also, before the events of the movie, in the episode One Dog's Junk, Spot's squeaky burger toy is sold at a yard sale, and it's later revealed to be bought by Ian. Throughout the day, Scott tries to get said toy back without revealing that it's important to him because, well, it's his dog toy. By the end, though, since Ian had bought a brand new one online, he gave the other one to Spot, which to some extent implies that he must know that Spot is really Scott in costume. Not only that, in the episode Bad Fur Day, when Scott imagines what would happen if he went to school with his new hairstyle, he looked like a poodle. As everyone obviously laughs at him for his silly look, it's Ian that points out that he and Leonard's dog Spot look similar due to their hairstyles. To be fair, young he is the one to claim that Scott is actually Spot in disguise, but still. And considering that he helped make it so that animals can communicate to humans, that's less of a stretch. Now you know the background of the universe of Disney's Teacher's Pet. Don't try to wrap your mind around it too much.